For the best average composite sample, the textbooks say to select 10 to 12 different sample locations. Wow, that seems like an awful lot of work. Do we really need to sample that many? In reality, there's very few consultants and contract labs that composite that many sites. Depending on how difficult the augering is, they usually composite four to six sites. Six sites, uh, even four for our acreage today is okay because the soil is somewhat uniform for each zone and the acreage we're sampling small. All right, one, one important thing to consider when you're taking these samples is the disposition of the microsprinkler, whatever emitter, irrigation pattern you're using, the tree, the drip line of the tree, and you want a sample representative of where the average water content is the tree's drawn from. So you're gonna come in about halfway between the trunk, the drip line, and then about an equal distance from where that uh, either fan jet microsprinkler pattern is. So right here would be a good place to do that. So once you've got the area you want to put your first hole in, it's a good idea just to scrape off this, this dirt that's out on the top here um, and see if there's some moisture underneath. So you can see we got a little bit of moisture. You said you irrigated a few days ago. Now what I like to do is take a little bit of water and I'll put a little bit of water just around the top so that we don't get the dry dirt coming back in the hole. Now we're ready to actually start twisting our auger. So just put that point in there and grab the handles and start bearing down like that. Once you've got that auger filled up, then just keep twisting clockwise, pull it up, set your buckets down. So what I like to do, there, right? right. Yeah, and I'll just set them down one, two, three, okay? okay. So there's three, there's one, two in the middle. Cool. Then you take your, just take your uh, mallet and drop it off. And go back into the hole? Then you go back into the hole. You have at it. I take it you want me to take it from oh, here? Sure, absolutely. Go ahead. All right. Now, your auger's probably filled up at this point. Okay. So, so I give it another little twist as you pull out and keep your chin back because I've busted my chin more times than I can remember. Knock that in our number one bucket and this, this next time you're going to be able to go down to the edge of your tape and that'll finish our first depth. You're right there. That's so it. Stop at that point. Yeah. Uh -huh. Pull that out. There you go. Knock that out, and then we go grab the second depth. And you notice this was just a little bit lighter, maybe a little less water. Uh, keep go ahead. We can get our second depth here. Great. I'm gonna guess because of the way they usually irrigate with the micro sprinklers. I'm imagining you didn't put on too long of a set. No. Okay. The color. You look at the color and it's and it's lightening up just a little bit as you go. Uh, so my guess is what, what's happened is the depth of your irrigation is probably only going about a foot and a half or 20 inches every time. Still good moisture down there. You know, plenty for these trees, especially this time of year. You know, you, usually you're only going to get maybe three, four twists out of there before you pull your bit up and and the word of caution is when you start pulling up too weak for this hey, you really want to keep moving it in a clockwise fashion if you start twisting counterclockwise there's a chance you'll loosen your bit and lose, lose it the down bit, there the dirt. yeah so that observation makes sense about the color change because i put a light irrigation since it's the end of the year yeah yeah <clears throat> and i'm guessing that's probably about the last time you're going to water these trees right that's correct yeah. Let me show you a trick I've found that sometimes helps to get this thing out is when you're, you're pushing down and you can see it really bites in there. So I'm, I'm getting about an inch or two with every turn. Then put the auger up against your thigh up like that mm -hmm. to twist and pull at the same time. Okay. And then, and then to avoid the thing snapping out and hitting you in the chin, Sometimes I'll just grab it with my arms like that. Well, it helps that you're a little yeah. taller, you know? Uh, well, <laughs> what can I say? 
I think that's All it right. for that number two, correct? Okay, let's check. I think I think it's about it. Yeah. Okay, so we go down to number three. Go ahead. All right. Yeah, it's always helpful. Use your knee and your thigh to pull those things up. Uh, wow, I thought I had a full one there, but... Well, sometimes that'll happen. So it looks like we're picking up a little bit more sand. You see how we're actually a lighter brown? Yeah, the color's um, changing. The color's changing. From a textural standpoint, um, I can make almost the same amount of ribbon, but it feels like I've picked up a little bit more silt, a little less clay at this point. Uh, we have achieved what we were after, though, in the fact that we do have a different color and we do have a different texture from what it was on the top. So it's a good thing we're going down to 48 inches. Excellent. So right when this tape hits the soil level, we're complete or below? We're done. All right. We got this spot done. Now all we got to do is catch our uh, uh, four to six other spots. And, and uh, if we don't see much change in the next three holes that we dig, probably four is enough. All right. And it's usually you want to walk about maybe oh, 100 foot, something like that, to your next site, and then you're good. All right. <clears throat> all right, Blake, that's the last of the depth we have here. So I, uh, is this all we have to do? That's it. Now knock it out, and we'll take these samples back to the truck and mix them up and put them in the bags. All right.